Hi, my name is Daphne and I study at TU Delft. I did my bachelor's in architecture here and now I'm doing my master's in architecture. I'm in my second year and graduating this year. And I'm David and after doing my bachelor's at TU Delft, I moved to Zurich to start my master's of robotics at ETH. We know from experience that a lot of prospective graduate students, especially international students, have to make the tough choice between TU Delft and ETH Zurich. Both are good universities and rank high in engineering and technology, so how do you make your choice? In this video, we'll highlight some of the difference between the master program at TU Delft and at ETH Zurich, purely from an academic perspective. So, we'll talk about the workload at each of these universities, how the master's curriculum is structured, tuition fees, course selection, scholarships available, and the student project culture. So, without further ado, let's get into the main differences between TU Delft and ETH. <laughs> If we look at the numbers, then the Technological University of Delft ranks 13th in the field of technology and engineering worldwide. My Faculty of Architecture ranks 3rd worldwide in 2021. Pretty good. ETH is a leading university in engineering and technology. It's ranked 4th in the world and 1st in continental Europe. And it's best known for uh, marine sciences, architecture and robotics. The tuition for TU Delft Master's Programme is for European citizens 2200 euros per year and for non-European citizens it's 19,600 euros for the next academic year, so 2022 to 2023. Tuition at ETH <laughs> is only 730 francs per semester which is around 1,460 uh, francs per year and this is for both EU and international students. If you need some financial aid I know of the ASML Technology Scholarship which is a scholarship for students studying at a Dutch university. You can apply and every year they choose 25 students to receive the scholarships which consists of 5,000 euros per year for both years of your master's. ETH offers financial aid to those who need it and there's even a, a calculator that you can use on their website. Um, the ETH Foundation also grants uh, 65 ESOP or Excellence Scholarships to uh, students that show very good academic records in their bachelor and uh, these students get 12,000 francs per semester which is very generous and uh, yeah if you're interested in this scholarship or want to know more um, I actually made a video on my channel with four or three other scholars uh, sharing our, our advice and our experience in obtaining this scholarship. Whether you're planning to study at TU Delft or ETH, there's a number of foundations that offer scholarships uh, both uh, funded by a government or by banks at your country. So for instance, for Spanish students, uh, you can apply to uh, a scholarship called La Caixa, which is funded by a bank and uh, offer scholarships, uh, fully funded scholarships to uh, students who want to study in Asia, the US or Europe. The length of the master's program is two years. With my master, the curriculum in those two years is completely set out for you. But in other master programs, you can customize your own curriculum more and it's a more flexible schedule. Whereas at ETH, the length of the program is actually quite flexible. The masters can be anything between 1.5 years and for some tracks even four years. Uh, in the case of robotics, it, it's between 1.5 years and three years. And I love this flexibility because it allows you to really choose if you want to take a lot of courses or if you want to take fewer courses but really squeeze uh, a lot out of them or do double internships or um, do research or part-time work on the side, so I love that flexibility. For the types of courses, I cannot say much about other faculties because they differ, but in my case, there are several types of courses you can have. There are studios, electives, or what I'm doing now is my graduation studio, in which I have to write a research plan, which will guide me through my 
final design. And my final design is worth 55 ECTs. There are certain moments in the curriculum which are free of choice because in the, both in the bachelor and in the master's program in architecture there are set courses you have to follow but they give you these spaces in which you can choose your own course. So for example, I choose to do an elective in basic coding. It was completely free. And a studio is basically just a fancy word for a course. Another thing that I really like about ETH is that uh, you're very free to choose any kind of course you like. Um, so you do have certain requirements uh, that you have to take a certain number of credits um, in core courses, they call them, which are tied to your track, so robotics, architecture, or whatever. Um, and uh, but aside from that, you have multidisciplinary credits that you can uh, obtain, and uh, there's a science and perspective course that you also have to take, uh, which are usually courses that either um, uh, relate to how to apply certain techniques uh, to solving real-world problems like global development or economics ethics, politics, etc. The nice thing is that you can take more credits than those required and uh, any extra credits that you take is useful because then you can choose which courses you want to count towards your average grade and it also means that you can take whatever course you want if you're not really if you don't really care about it contributing to your average grade. Um, so you if you're in robotics you can take quantum engineering or uh, another course maybe even in the University of Zurich. Something that's not so nice at ETH for students is that you only get one reset and it's usually at the end of the next semester. In my master's program, it's not required to do an internship. A lot of people have a part-time job on the side to get some experience and many students also do a few years of work before coming to the master's program. But I know for certain that in other master programs, you have to have an internship. And usually these internships are up to six months with some companies. Since Delft is a very small city, I think it has around 80,000 citizens, a lot of people have to look to other cities to do their internship. So this is a thing to think about when looking for an internship. Internships are usually not that well paid. Um, they really see you as a student who's learning. So. I would say that if you get paid around three to four hundred euros a month, you have a pretty good paying internship. The internship is a mandatory part of some master tracks like robotics and it's eight credits of the total uh, load of credits that you have to get during your masters. Uh, internships in Switzerland are really well paid, uh, a minimum wage of uh, around three thousand francs a month and uh, the minimum time you have to uh, be at these companies for is around six weeks but most companies actually require something like six months which is what I did. So for the workload we work in periods of 10 weeks. 10 weeks is a quarter and every 10 weeks you need to get 15 ECTs. One ECT being 28 hours of work so when you calculate it it's 42 hours uh, per week you need to put in so it's a full-time job but most of the time people do it in less. At ETH the workload is really up to you. You can take as many or as little credits as you want per semester depending on how long you want your masters to be. Since the semesters are a semester long uh, this means that personal time management is a lot more important. Uh, so while many courses don't have any mandatory assignments or work that you need to do during the semester, you are expected to keep up with lectures and with optional exercises. But it's up to you if you want to spend your semester hiking or skiing and then stress out a month before exams. My week usually looks like one to two sessions with my tutor per week, which are individual most of the time, and then one lecture for everybody for the whole studio but this is not for all the masters from this university of course there are lectures for everybody and those are not mandatory but throughout the quarter there are many mandatory homework assignments and then and big assessment at the end so your homework 
counts for your grade at the end. Some courses are heavily group based while others don't require any physical interaction with other students or TAs or anything like that. So in courses where there's no interaction required you can usually ask questions during lecture, at the breaks um, or online through forums like Piazza or Moodle uh, where you mostly will interact with TAs. Um, usually the courses with Limited participation are the ones where you'll be able to get a lot more feedback, direct feedback from the professor who's teaching the course. In all tracks, you're also assigned a tutor at the start of your master's, which is something you actually have to choose when you apply to, uh, to the master's. Um, the tutor is something that I used to place a lot of importance in, but uh, after seeing that I've only had about one meeting with, with them or zero uh, every semester, um, it seems like this is just a person that's going to do some administrative stuff for you, like approving the learning agreement, the semester project, the internship and the master thesis for you. Uh, but usually these professors are really busy and they only have time to meet uh, once or twice and have a, a bit of an email correspondence with you. In the architecture faculty, the entire top floor is just workspaces. So you can study here and a lot of students from different faculties also come here to study. But the most popular location by far is the library. You can come here for regular study places, quiet study places, uh, spaces to work with your group. It has, of course, all the books you could ever need and coffee. Or when it's nice weather, so like two weeks a year, you can lay down on top of the grass, on top of the library. So when I first came to ETH, uh, I had the impression that there were a lot less workspaces than at TU Delft, um, but actually that was a bit misguided. Uh, I think there's a similar number of spots, but they're just a lot more spread out and sometimes a bit hard to find. Uh, so they're in places around faculty buildings. Um, there's also a lot of spots in um, UZH, which is the university that's basically next to ETH in the center campus, uh, which also has a Calatrava library that's behind here. Um, there's also like a hidden spot all the way at the top of the dome of ETH. Um, and there's also a library at ETH. It's just a bit harder to access than, for instance, the library at TU Delft, which is one of the obvious landmarks uh, when you walk around campus. Student teams are Delft's pride because they often get a lot of attention from the media. And these are teams like Nuner Solar Car, the Hyperloop, or uh, Formula Student Delft. These teams compete in big international competitions regularly and are supported by big companies. These teams have access to this place called the Dream Hall, where they have the tools, the workshops, and the offices to work on their project and build things like this. This is one of their projects and it's called the Stratus Rocket. At ETH, student teams like AMZ usually have small offices uh, or small labs uh, on campus, either in the central campus or in Hongenberg, uh, but they usually have workshops in Techno Park, uh, which is a bit further away from campus, closer to the center. Um, and there's also initiatives like uh, the Campus Fund, which allows students to invest in other student projects or student startups around campus. Um, and there's also the Student Project House, which is a building. There's actually two buildings. The newest one is in the center, and there's another one in Hongerberg, where students can uh, 3D print stuff or build things uh, and have workspaces to uh, get together with their teams to uh, work on projects. Let us know if you want to see us compare TU Delft and ETH on other facets such as living costs or student life. We'll see you in the next one.